You know, if we look at Lindsay Lohan as an example, she's successful, isn't she? Fame, fortune, top actress. Yet she's in and out of alcoholic homes and drug abuse homes, and she's in and out of prison. And is that success? No. Because she hasn't defined what success means to her. She hasn't aligned her values with what success means to her. And when you can do that, and you can have your why power dictating what you do, because let's be honest, life's what happens while we make other plans. Is it possible to have a world with a one-sided positive magnet? Impossible. In fact, I was interviewing John DeMartini on my radio station a couple of weeks ago, and he said to me, Andrew, I will give you one billion dollars, and I think he's got it too, the bugger. I'll give you one billion dollars if you can find a one-sided magnet. And I'll say the same thing to you tonight. Tonight, If you can find a one-sided positive life, like, that, like is depicted in The Secret, where everything is positive and everything goes well, I'll give you a billion dollars. I'll borrow it from John Dumartini. <laughs> okay, so it's not realistic to expect to live a life without challenge. In fact, do we do that for our own children? Do you bring up a child and you give them everything they want? Everything in their life is positive. What kind of child are you going to have? A brat. Why is it different when we're adults? Why do different set of standards apply to our kids that apply to us? So the reality is you're going to encounter challenges. So if you don't have that deep, inspiring why in your belly of why you want to succeed, the why power, when those inevitable challenges come, you're going to give up. Do you know how many times people try on average to succeed? Less than once. That's sad. 3% of the world's population have written down goals. 3% of the world's population control 95% of the world's wealth. Strange correlation. By no means am I standing up the front here and saying to you guys, money's everything. But <laughs> you know what? It's bloody nice to suffer in a Ferrari rather than in a Beetle. It's, <laughs> you know it's way better. So, accept that find, search, look, discover that deep why. Unleash, was that what you need to do? Unleash your why power. And you won't need to use willpower. An important thing to remember when you unleash this why power is you don't need to reboot your life. It's not a case of we're going to start all over again, switch off, control, alt, delete, let's... No. It's small shifts that you need to make in your life. When my son was in the trick, he, he, was, he, was, he was in the part of the class that makes the top half possible. Okay? He was really struggling. He was battling. In fact, he, he was in, in, in the part of the class that makes the last person possible. You know when, when you write your name on a paper and the teacher has to give you something for effort because you spelt it right? Well, well he was doing that. And, you know, of course, this is what I do. I mean, I work with companies and businesses and individuals and, and, and I make them successful. But my own child, the tailor's got the worst dressed, you know, he's the worst dressed person in town. Well, my own child was battling. And we go away once a year and we go and do a, a brainstorming session. And we, we were doing a brainstorming session and at that time, because Clyde was battling, it was five months to, to the end of the year, we were, you know, going back and forth, how to figure this out. And eventually we, we, we kind of came up, we, we came up with a plan we went back, he had five months. In that five months, just by changing his attitude, changing his belief, changing the way that he studied, he revolutionized his life. He went from failing, not knowing whether he was going to be a plumber, a secretary, an electrician, bomb around the world for a couple of months, to know exactly what he wanted. He decided to become a pilot, which he did on his own steam. I didn't write checks. He went and got the finance. He's done it all himself to become a pilot. And he got the prize for the most improved student of the year. He had five months. We didn't have time to reboot his life. But there were such massive changes with small shifts in his life. And that's what I'm asking you guys to do. Three small shifts tonight. Code of personal achievement, which I'll describe to you just now. 
measure your performance. When you measure it, whatever gets measured gets done. Your performance management system in meetings with your future. Was Yola McCarty. That's her 87 years of age. She was a humble washerwoman who washed other people's clothes for a living for her whole life. And what made her amazing is at the age of 87, she was awarded three doctorates. Bill Clinton gave her the Presidential Award for Achievement, and the United Nations gave her an award for uh, contribution to education. How did a humble washerwoman who spent her whole life washing other people's clothes, earning a very small living, get that much success? What she did was apply one simple rule in her life, the rule of compounding, the eighth wonder of the world, compounding. She did small little things, positive things, every single day of her life that revolutionized her life. She accumulated $250,000 by the time she was 87 years old. Now let's put that into perspective. That's almost 2 million rand. The average American family, that's husband and wife, by the time they retire, has accumulated around $50,000. It's five times less. This woman was a humble washerwoman who earned very, very meager wages her whole life. But she had one thing. She had discipline. And she did something positive towards her success every single day. She took one dollar and she'd go to the trust bank and deposit it every day. And over time, it accumulated to an amazing $250,000. What brought her to the attention of the media was, at 87, the banker who looked after her whole life, said, you know, you've got $250,000, it's a lot of money. What do, you, what do you want to do with it? And she, she was a humble lady who didn't really have any education, so she didn't understand how much money it actually was. And so to simplify things, the banker put 10 coins in front of her and he said, Oziola, how would you like us to use your money when you're not with us any longer? And she took one coin and she pushed it forward and she said, give that to the church. She took three coins and she pushed it forward and she said, give that to my living family. That, you know, family members of mine are still alive. She took the last six coins and she pushed them forward. And she said, give that money to a deserving young person that didn't have or can have the advantage that I never had in my life. Based on that, the publicity that she got, Ted Turner donated $1 billion to her education fund. She's left a lasting legacy in her life. How did she accumulate $250,000? Small, tiny incremental little activities every single day. One dollar here, five dollars there, ten dollars here. Over 87 years added up to immense wealth. What about you? What small actions are you taking every day that are contributing to your future, to your success? As an example, if you have two individuals, one takes 125 calories out of their diet, another one adds 125 calories into their diet. It's a can of Coke replaced by a glass of water. It's nothing. After five months, with a rounding error, there's hardly any difference, no perceptible difference between the two people's weights. After 18 months, yeah, there's a little bit of a low handle starting to hang over the belt. At 31 months, person taken 125 out is 9 kilos lighter. Person added 125 calories is 9 kilograms heavier. 18 kilograms. That's the difference between lean and fat. Small things, guys. 125 calories a day. So what's that saying? Oziola did the positive stuff. This guy did the negative stuff. 125 calories extra a day. Extra coke a day. A tin of coke a day. It's nothing. What's the outcome? 9 kilos of weight heavier. Or 9 kilos of weight lighter. So. The reality about compounding is, whether you know about it or you don't know about it, it works. So, ignorance of compounding is not going to mean that it's not going to work for you. So, as easy as it is to do the stuff, as easy as it is to get into your car or walk to the bank and put a dollar in the bank every day, so easy is it to stop and have a McDonald's or buy a Starbucks coffee. $250,000 difference. 
How are you going to make your life different? What small positive changes are you going to make in your life? The tiny incremental changes tomorrow, after this presentation tonight, that are going to revolutionize your life. The small shift, you don't need to reboot your life, remember? You need to make tiny shifts, make tiny positive contributions to your success every single day. And everything becomes possible for you. This is the next killer of our dreams. Anybody know what that is? It's a, it's a water pump. Okay, anyone who's grown up on the farming communities will know what that is. You need to chuck a little bit of water into it and then you need to pump like hell because normally the water is about 25, 25 feet down and you need to pump and pump and pump and pump and slowly but surely the water comes up the pump and then when it gets to the top it's easy to stand there and go and the water flows. But how do we operate in our lives? Fits and starts, remember? We start off with that gym contract in January and we are so determined we're going to make it work and we... I think I'm telling everyone's life story. I can see people shifting in their chairs going, how does he know? Has he come, has he come and checked me? Has he, has he phoned my husband or my wife and been asking questions? Because that's me. It is us, guys. But that's how we do. That's how we operate. That's unfortunately how we function. 3% of people may have goals written down. 97% of people don't. Do you know what that means to me? That, does, that, that doesn't mean to me, oh no, that's damn hard. It means to me I can very quickly make myself the top 3% in the world just by making a small shift. Just by changing the way I do things. I can put myself in the super achievement bracket. Unbelievable. So how does this work? Okay? What do most people do with their water pump? Okay? They start pumping, they go to the gym, and they do as much as they possibly can for three days, and no water comes up. Well, obviously, you haven't pumped hard enough. It's just about getting to the top of the pipe, and I stop. So what happens? All the way back down to the bottom. And I, when a week later, I'm guilty as hell, so I go back to gym and I pump like hell, and just before it's going to flow, I stop again. Fits and starts, fits and starts. I get nowhere. So what does it mean? Consistency. Osceola. Take those consistent actions every day. They're little. They don't mean much. I mean, for example, today, okay, never got a chance to go to gym. What did I do? I got down and I did three sets of press-ups and I did three sets of sit-ups. Is that going to change my health? Is it going to make much difference? Hell no. But what did I do? I pumped the lever. So when I do get back to gym, my water's still there. It's still flowing. I'm not having to start pumping again. I've just kept the water going. Well, that's just a trickle. The water's still flowing. So be consistent. Consistency wins every single time. Become an Osceola. Make your life successful. Turn your life into something meaningful, not by doing massive things. Do small things. Take small actions consistently.